Ah, Jeeves. No, well, I don't know if you're aware of it, but this binge has depreciated your stock considerably. I'm sorry to hear that, sir. Well, you might at least have ascertained that she was Uncle George's barmaid. I did, sir. What? The young man Smethers had approached me in the hope that I might be able to do something to further his cause with Miss Platt, sir. There will now be no obstacle to their union. Well, that's all fine and large, Jeeves, but what about Uncle George? You've landed him nicely in the cart. No, sir, if I might take the uh, liberty of opposing your view. I fancy Mrs. Wilberforce will make an admirable mate for his lordship. Oh, no, 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 Jeeves, think. You said yourself only yesterday that Morley Wilberforce is definitely of the people. Sturdy lower middle class stock, sir. A much needed injection of fresh blood. Now, perhaps you would like to change before the journey, sir. I thought you could drive down after lunch while I take the baggage by train. What train? What journey? Why are we packing? Uh, your uncle has taken Mrs. Wilberforce to meet Mrs. Gregson this afternoon, sir. He's taken her to meet Aunt Agatha? I think perhaps if we were to leave the metropolis for a while, it might be expedient, sir. And if you recall, Lord Wickhamsley invited us down to Twing some time ago for the village festivities. Mm. I think we ought to go before lunch, don't you, Jeeves? Oh. Just as you say. Well, well, I'm waiting. Mummy, please. I simply want an answer from your father. I bitterly regret now that I was so kind and forgiving when he lost the Rolls Royce to Lord Ickenham last year. Oh, that was just a run of bad luck, Drusilla. I had three kings Enough. and they... As for this latest outrage... Not in front of the guests, Mummy. I am sorry if I'm embarrassing the guests. But what I have to say applies equally to them. There will be no more betting of any sort in this house. Oh, I say. No. Hmm. Just a few little bets, hmm? No. behind the bar. Her name is Myrtle. Isn't she beautiful? She's a tender goddess, isn't she? She is, she is. You can see it, can't you? What happened to Daphne? Daphne? The one who came after Honoria. Passing fancy, Bertie. The folly of one's youth. It was only a week and a half ago. Myrtle was up in town to see her uncle. We met on top of a bus. She was... Hello, Steggles. Come and meet my friend, Bertie Worcester. And you do. This is Rupert Steggles. What ho, Steggles? I'm going inside. This fresh air is getting into my lungs. He's staying at Lord Wickmersley's too. Snappy dresser. I wish you wouldn't hang around Myrtle all the time, though. She doesn't like it. I say, Bertie, do you want to come in on a little flutter? You interest me strangely, old bird. There's one thing we Worcesters are positively dripping with. It's sporting blood. Steggles has decided to make a book on the sports of the village of fate. Say, I think I can put you in the way of making a parcel on the mother's sack race. Lead on, old scout. The idea is an attractive one, sir. Unfortunately, Lady Wickhamsley has come down strongly against any form of betting at Twing. Partly, I understand, as a result of his lordship losing the East Wing in a game of shove halfpenny last week. Oh, this is bad news, Jeeves. Indeed, sir. It was only the strongest possible representations to the other party involved and the passage of a considerable sum in money that saved the old place. No, no, I meant about the betting. I'm so looking forward to the fate on Monday. Me too. I love all those races they have. <laughs> yes. My favourite's the boys and girls mixed animal potato <laughs> race. <laughs> What on earth is that? Oh, well, oh, it's wonderful. You all get into couples, and each couple is given an animal noise to make, and a potato. <laughs> and one of you stands in a thick spot, holding the potato and making the animal noise. Mewing like a cat or barking like a dog. <laughs> and the other one has a bag over his head. And has to try and find his partner. I've forgotten what the potato's for. Well, damn difficult to estimate form, anyhow. Hugo. Go 
Not the race car? Yes. Come on. But another most wonderful thing. Later. Guess why I got Later. it from? Guess why I got it from? I got it from Myrtle. Yes, yes, yes. Right. Oh, you can still smell a scent on it. See? No, thank you, Bingo. <laughs> can we get on? Right. Um, the girls under 12 egg and spoon race. Any thoughts about that, Jeeves? Last year's winner, Sarah Mills, is the favourite, Sam. What are her chances? I haven't seen the gallops, of course, but I understand little Sarah carries a beautiful egg. She... He's not here. Jesus. It's Lady Cynthia, sir. We thought you were your mother. Oh, no, she's too busy giving Daddy his evening lecture. Rupert Staggles thinks you're forming a syndicate. What rot. Can I join? Absolutely. Oh, thank you. We were just going through the card. Right. Carry on, Bingo. Uh, Mother's sack race. Ah, oh, now, you know something about that. A gift from Mrs. Penwither, the tobacconist's wife. I was in a shop yesterday buying some cigarettes, and she told me that she'd won three times at fairs in Worcestershire. She only moved here a few weeks ago, so, so no one knows about her yet. Risk a tenner each way, Jeeves? I think so, sir. Uh, father's hat trimming contest. Mm, a very speculative event, sir. Married couple's three-legged long jump? Advocated any large scale disbursement. Ah, uh, Mr. Worcester. Oh, what ho, James? <coughs> I hoped I might find you here, sir. Positively animated, Jeeves. I'm sorry, sir. <coughs> I have information regarding the choir boy's handicap, sir. The probable winner of that event is even now under the very roof of Twing Hall. Harold, sir, the page boy. I don't see it, Jeeves. He's practically circular. The boy is a flyer, sir. How do you know? I happened to be pursuing him this morning with a view to fetching him a clip on the side of the head. Great Scott, Jeeves, you? <clears throat> the lad is of an outspoken disposition, sir, and had made an opprobrious remark respecting my appearance. What did he say about your appearance? I do not recall, sir, but it was opprobrious. I attempted to correct him, but he outdistanced me by yards and made good his escape. This is sensational. We are sure, are we, Jeeves? Hi. That sounds like the off now, is it? Mr. Little, Mr. Whitton, what in God's name are you doing there? <laughs> we, uh, we, uh, we... Oh. <clears throat> the young gentleman had expressed an interest in horticulture, my lady. I was enlightening them as to the life cycle of the earthworm. Essential grounding, I have always felt, for a proper understanding of the subject. Oh. Oh, I see. Very well, then. Do carry on. Thank you, my lady. Uh, <clears throat> observe, gentlemen, the distended saddle on this specimen. Twin. What a joy. What are you, Steggles? Hello, Worcester. Morning, Myrtle. Mr. Worcester. What, I have a word? <clears throat> now then, touching on the choir boy's hundred yard handicap, I'd like to place a small bet on Harold Harnsworth. The fat boy. Well, we're quoting, um, 18 to 1 at the moment. 18 to 1. There you are. To win. Antipos. 20 pounds to win? You know something. Know something? No, I... no, no, no. I just, uh, just like the name. Harold. Harold Hartsworth. It's got a sort of ring to it, don't you think? Harold Hartsworth. Oh, I think it has anyway. Whenever I... Yes, yes, never mind about that. Thank you. 